Um, I would like to now call Jamal Brown, principal of the Ocean Company, who will be discussing the variety of issues in the office market, and also Terry Moore, senior vice president and principal of ACI Apartments here at a local company in San Diego. much for both being here. We can't thank you enough for educating our members and helping our members understand your industry. So I thought first we'd go right into the apartment sector. And I thought we'd ask a, ter a question to Terry first. Terry, it seems like there's a lot of local and state policies that have a direct effect on housing in both good and bad ways. What is your opinion on some of the policies that have an effect, if any, on your profession and your respected industry as a whole. Thank you. So if you didn't have your bathroom break, you're in trouble because it'll take me a week to answer that. <laughs> the state of California, the city of San Diego have built half as many apartments and condos as we need in the last generation. The city of Houston has one fourth the population of California. They built more apartments and condos than the state of California has in the last decade. Rents are cheap in Houston. Apartments are cheap in Houston, not so in California. Well, a little over a year ago, the city of San Diego made a change and the state of California made a change. And the state of California has taken the power of no away from the local jurisdiction. ADUs is something that we are familiar with and we're learning more about. The city of San Diego has gone further in terms of the density bonus law that was passed said that you could convert garage spaces, laundry spaces, storage spaces, attached garages, you could turn them into residential space, an eight unit building with garages, you could turn up to, you could turn the garages into two studios. The city of San Diego has said you can convert all the garages. Our governments have decided that people are more important than parking. We've had a lot of discussion my wife was not governor. She didn't get to veto that bill. She hates it. She doesn't like the fact that we're going to have ADUs in our zip code. But it will happen. Building ADUs for residential in residential areas maybe will deal with 5% of the 100,000 plus rental shortage that we've got. It will help a little bit. The city of San Diego has done something more transformative though. They have a thing called complete communities. I have a little listing, I'm grateful for it. I have a little listing on Madison and 30th Street. There's two buildings there. There, Ed Insurance had his place there for 30 years and he sold it to the girls, the 40 year old women who worked for him and now the girls are 60 and they've since moved to a different spot. So they ran a successful insurance agency out of this little house for 40 years or so. And behind it was the cottage. So we have two structures 70 years old. Under complete communities, somebody could build 51 units with no parking. The city of San Diego is up on more than 20,000 parcels. They have created the potential to build 10 times as much apartments as we need. If, if you have a little rental house somewhere and somebody tears down the rental house next door and puts 30 units there, we've doubled the parking demand for the block and no new parking. That will give us density. It may not be pretty, but we're going to build, I think this year we're gonna build enough housing for your kids, your nieces, your nephews. Many states build enough for people who don't graduate from college. California has not done that. We are changing that. It's inelegant, but that will be a big change. So the government has created a rental housing shortage and government in its wisdom has figured out a solution. They're gonna free the market. I tried to get close enough to read the slide and I couldn't tell whether they said we had about, about 3,000 ADUs or about 5,000, but I remember a few years ago in the city of San Diego when we had over a million people, we had four <laughs> ADUs, as in less than five. Now we have about 4,000. So we're getting ADUs 
and that will help, but not much. Thank you, Terry. And just to let you know, our next segment is on ADU, so we'll keep that in mind. I think I'd like to switch over now from apartments over to office for the next question. And Jamal, I just thought we'd talk about, again, COVID. So just let's get that out of the way. With the state of the COVID market, what are the current trends for both employers and employees in providing an office space that is both comfortable for returning back to the office and staying in the office? Thank you, Jamal. Okay, so to start off with, the idea of a COVID market in the office place should kind of be done away with. I think there are a lot of people that still believe that there's, you know, a flood of available office space out there and their prices are going to be discounted and they're going to get things for free. Um, so I want to make sure that everybody knows that, that is not true. Uh, unless you live downtown or want to operate downtown, in which case office space is everywhere, but it's just not free. So um, the idea of you know, COVID really playing a huge role in the office space transactions, I think is something we should kind of put to bed. Uh, to answer your question though, um, let's see, I've seen a, employers do a lot of things. I've seen them do uh, hub and spoke models. So while they're still leasing main HQ office space, they are leasing probably less than their actual growth dictates they should to lease in one space. They're gonna take you know, one area and put you know, their HQ there and they're gonna look for smaller satellite offices or utilize uh, flex workspaces like your WeWork, your Regis spaces, I believe is another one, and either give employees that live far away from that main HQ office memberships there, uh, or again, if they're satellite offices, you know, of 1,000, 2,000 square feet or something like that, allow them to kind of go there to work when they want to. Um, COVID really did a number on, you know, people's confidence in working together in close quarters, where as we were going into, you know, 20. 17, 2018, the footprint per employee in office space was shrinking. Uh, a lot of people were working in bench seating and were working very, very closely to other people in small cubicles. Uh, that number is going to grow because of COVID. We're going to go back to, you know, almost being at 120 to 150 square foot per employee to kind of satisfy COVID guidelines. Uh, that it can only be accomplished by leasing larger office space or breaking your office into many components such as the hub and spoke model dictates. So. Thank you, Jamal. Yeah. Great answer. Appreciate the knowledge and the information. I'd like to go back now to the apartment sector. Um, a lot of people in this room were either trying to do big apartment deals, small apartment deals, so I thought we'd ask one of the best. Terry, we would love to have an example of some of the recent deals you have done, an example of how competitive and beneficial it is to acquire apartment properties here in San Diego and Southern California. I'll do one of each. I was fortunate to get a listing in Hillcrest, 16 units. We did the valuation. We thought it would appraise close to five million. We listed it for five million six. We had multiple offers. We put it under contract above list price. Uh, guess what? The 100-year-old building had 100-year-old foundations. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and it had 100-year electrical. Who would have thought? We had six people look at the foundation. We're under contract above list price. We're on buyer number two. If they go away, we'll sell it to somebody else above list price. We've heard about houses going up and values being up 13%. And guess what? People are afraid of inflation and they're getting next to nothing in their bank account, so they're eager to buy. So I'm not special, I'm just old. I've done about 50 deals in the last two years during COVID. 60% of my transactions are on the buy side. And in the last 90 days, I've probably written a dozen sensible offers, sensible being 90% of list price, and let's see, on the apartments, let's see, let me count how many apartment deals I put under contract on the buy side. There was, um, well, I've had three people have written offers that were above where we thought it would appraise and got none of them. Last week, we had somebody who wrote list price, didn't get a counter. We had somebody who wrote above list price, didn't get a counter. So there's a huge demand. There's probably 1,500 millionaires chasing less than 400 deals. So it's an interesting challenge. Thank you so much. 
again, we have a lot of SDR members who like to dabble into apartment properties. They get listings. A lot of them are sole practitioners. So we, we here at CRISD want to be that guide to help you guys if you have any questions or answers regarding a transaction as well. So let's go switch over to the office sector again. Uh, Jamal, what parts of San Diego and Southern California are companies most interested to be located in? Are there any thoughts on policy, split role, et cetera, that have a negative or positive effect on the office industry? That's a great question. Thank you. Okay. Um, San Diego's the, I think we're the number four biotech hub in the country now. Is that right? We're four or five. Three? Three. <laughs> we're doing really good these days. Um, so we're a humongous, humongous life science biotech hub. Those historically have, those companies have historically been in Sorrento Mesa. They started expanding to Carlsbad about 10 years ago. Um, they have grown out of Sorrento Mesa because of lack of inventory and they do still occupy office space even though they converted some of it to lab and they've expanded from there into Del Mar Heights Carmel Valley. Uh, Del Mar Heights Carmel Valley used to be one of the most and is still the most expensive office market in San Diego uh, but it's now has a constraint of supply because there are large biotech companies that are going gobbling up office space and converting it to office lab space. UTC is another area that's always been very very hot. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have had jobs at one point or have clients that work in UTC that has continued to add product over the last 10 years and it's done pretty well for itself in terms of you know staying at a relatively low vacancy rate. On the other hand you have downtown which continues to add product. Uh, we've added over a million square feet in the last year. We're adding another 500,000 feet. It'll be about 800 this year. 800, okay. Um, we've got products that are coming out of the ground and products that are completed throughout the uh, process of the pandemic, whatever you want to call that, that are completely vacant to this day. And so we've got some areas where there's not enough office space, like your Del Mar Heights or UTC, um, and then you've got places where there's too much office space that's available, like downtown. That being said, to answer the question, a lot of companies want to locate somewhere nearby the leadership of that company, and a lot of times leaders live in North County. So, you know, your North County markets are going to be a lot tighter, a lot more difficult to uh, get big blocks of space in that's not brand new office space. I mean, whereas you're going to look at you know, the 78 corridor where there's not a lot of company headquarters, they have the most reasonable prices, they've got you know, enough vacancy to kind of maintain um, a healthy vacancy rate. Um, or else South Bay, where there aren't a whole lot of company headquarters either. So, kind of to summarize, a lot of people want to be on that I-5 corridor, specifically in North County. Um, kind of everywhere else in the market, you can find, you know, decent sized office space and relatively good rates. Um, Mission Valley might be the last place, I think, that is a little bit impacted by a lack of supply and then you know, has a healthy rent rate as well. Thank you, Jamal. I appreciate it. Great answer, by the way. So, in closing, really fast, we wanted to all thank you for being here. I hope you guys learned something today. Um, so, thank you so much for being here. We will now have a 10-minute break and return for our next break, uh, breakout segment. Thanks so much. Thank you, Pamela.